This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Greg Duncan. He's the chairperson and CEO of Virios Therapeutics. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is VIRI on NASDAQ. And you can actually see Greg give an investor presentation at our upcoming event, the SNN Network Summer Virtual Event, happening August 17th through 19th, 2021. To register and see his presentation, please go to conference.snn.network. With that, Greg, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Robert, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to share information about Varios Therapeutics. Absolutely. So this is actually our first time doing an interview together. So as is tradition, can you please start us off with a quick overview and history of the company? Sure. So the company was founded on a very simple principle. And that principle was as follows, that many patients across the globe have diseases that are chronic in nature. And that the trigger for those diseases is an activated virus. It may surprise you to know that the vast majority of adults across the planet are infected with viruses like herpes simplex one, Epstein-Barr, et cetera. And so the company was really founded on the principle of developing antiviral inhibitors, combination antiviral drugs that actually get an activated virus into a dormant state. They allow the immune system to reset and we see clinical outcomes of reduced pain, fatigue, better functionality in patients who meet diagnostic criteria for things like fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Very good. And, and where are we currently at in the clinic right now? So Virios is uh, very privileged to have a fantastic team and a drug that's already into phase 2B clinical trials. We're executing a phase 2B trial in concordance with basically all the requirements of a phase 3 program. We're enroll enrolling patients as we speak, and we expect to enroll something north of 450 patients by the end of this calendar year or as we transit into 2022. And we expect top line results from this landmark trial in the middle of 2022. If we have good results, our plan would be to get down to FDA sometime in the fall of 2022 to scope out the phase three program and decide what's the best path forward. Do we go alone or do we partner IMC1 or novel antiviral therapy for treating patients with fibromyalgia? Uh, once we get to that particular point. Very good. And, and, you know, taking one quick step back, I mean, what would you say makes your formulation unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? So really the value proposition of the, of the company is quite straightforward. We are targeting a very significant and large market of imagine. It may surprise you to know, Rob, but there's something north of 200 million people across the globe that meet the diagnostic criteria for fibromyalgia. This is a very large market, and unfortunately, it's quite dissatisfied. Uh, patients generally can um, get some pain relief from the existing medications, but the drugs are not well tolerated. It may surprise you to know, Robert, that there are only three drugs approved to date to treat fibromyalgia by the Food and Drug Administration. So a very large market, some satisfaction, but really looking for new therapies. Our therapy is novel. It's an antiviral combination inhibitor. And as a consequence, it's the first in class for this particular disorder. We have fantastic phase 2A data which show highly statistically significant reductions in pain and improvements in fatigue, mood disorders, etc. in a phase 2A trial. And probably most importantly from an execution perspective is that between myself, the board, and the team, we've actually been directly involved in the development and commercialization of two of the three drugs approved to date by FDA. So a large dissatisfied market, novel idea, supported by clinical data and a team that's run this race before. That's a perfect segue into your background. I mean, as I literally just said, you've been a part of, of getting two out of three drugs approved already for fibromyalgia. Tell us a little bit about that experience. What was that like? And because I'm sure that'll help give our audience a little bit of an indication as to what, you know, your current trajectory is with what you're doing at Virios. Yeah, so thank you for asking. So I, I joined Pfizer back in 1989 and spent 17 years with uh, Pfizer in various roles, uh, in US uh, leadership roles and UK leadership roles. I ran Pfizer's Latina business for a couple of years. And my first drug launch actually parallels this a little bit was a drug called Zola, which is probably known to yourself and, and many other people. And the market was not as small, but was underdeveloped uh, when we launched Zola. And basically we delivered a drug that was both safe and effective and established a very healthy foothold into that marketplace and then educated patients and docs to accelerate the diagnosis discussion and get patients on better therapies earlier. Uh, we did this with drugs like Viagra and Celecoxib and other drugs 
uh, that were both novel, but importantly, and this is really what I admire most about Pfizer, is not just developing and commercializing great drugs, but accelerating the standard of care such that we can actually enhance that dialogue and get patients on better therapies, and particularly patients who are not maybe diagnosed at this point. Uh, our chief medical officer, Mike General, actually spent several years with Cypress Biosciences. He developed and commercialized Civella, one of those three approved drugs. Uh, interestingly enough, he was a consultant to the FDA uh, before any of the three drugs were approved. And he helped the FDA scope out the very process that's used, used largely intact to today to approve those three drugs. So we know what it takes. We know what the entry criteria are. We know the length of the trial. We know how these trials are run. And I'm pleased to tell you that we just, uh, between Mike, uh, Angela, Ralph, and the rest of the team, we have just operationalized north of 40 sites to execute the phase 2B trial, though actively enrolling patients uh, as we speak. And we're looking forward to groundbreaking results in the middle of 2022 when the phase 2B trial leads out. That leads me to my final question before I let you go here. And you alluded to this question pretty much the entire time. But, you know, to wrap it up here from what you can tell us, what would you say then are some additional value catalysts for the company now moving forward? Yeah, great question. So the good news for somebody considering a forward investment in various therapeutics, uh, we're obviously available on the NASDAQ stock exchange, uh, is the following. Um, the trial we're executing right now is fully funded. So we have proceeds to get to the end of 2022. We don't need to raise additional money before our ultimate catalyst, which is the phase two B results in the middle of 2022. I'm pleased to tell you there are a number of operational milestones along the way. 50% enrollment as we get into fall, 100% enrollment as we get to the end of the year. Uh, we also have a collaboration, as I um, referenced many times in these presentations, with Dr. Michael Camilleri at the Mayo Clinic to design a clinical trial to explore IMC1's value, this combination antiviral therapy's value in irritable bowel syndrome. And we're also assessing fatigue-related symptoms, including patients with COVID long hauler disease, where the thesis presently is that patients who have coronavirus tax the immune system, and those who have other viruses that they're infected with have those viruses break through. And that may be leading to the manifestation of long hauler disease, where fatigue, interestingly enough, which responded quite well to IMC1 in our phase 2A fibromyalgia trial, uh, could be triggered by an activated herpes simplex 1 virus, which is a target of our therapy. So we projected uh, to, to uh, read out and communicate our research expansion uh, ideas in the fall of this year. So Fibromyalgia operational milestones, top line results in mid-22, mid uh, and then secondary program readout in the fall of this year, as well as uh, fibromyalgia data being presented, we hope, at the American College of Rheumatology meeting as we prep the external world for our phase two results. Very good. Well, with that, Greg, where can our audience go and find more information about Virios? Yeah, simply put, go to virios.com. You can see information about the company, the leadership team, uh, our research programs, publications about our data, and you can contact us if you have questions that dive deeper than the information you see on Virios.com. Well, Greg, with that, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck, stay safe, and I look forward to our next update. Yep. See you at the conference, Robert. Thank you.